This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Rendering, rendering and adjusting. So we've prepared our scene and we're ready to press the render button. So let's do that. This is the render button right down here. It's a little teapot and it has a little light bulb on it. As soon as you press it, the light bulb will turn on and you get this rendering dialog box. You can choose the settings. For now, we're going to do draft, but you have draft, low, medium, high, and so on. Never go higher than high. Anything else beyond there is just going to take really long time. Even high is going to take a very long time. Medium is a good one. That does a very good quality rendering and it doesn't take too, too long as you'll find out. So if we go with draft to start, that'll help us. The other thing you got here is the output resolution. Notice it says screen, and it also says the image size. The bigger the image, the longer it's going to take. Notice as I zoom in and zoom out, this gets bigger and bigger because the amount that it has to render is bigger. So if I want to do a draft, I could just maybe zoom out to there and say, you know what, that right there is a good compromise. It'll give me a good overall view, but it should be fairly fast. Next, we have lighting. So what scheme are we going to use? Main thing you're choosing here, interior or exterior? Simple, I'm interior. Next, do we want to just see how the sun affects the space? You could do that. You could run that if you want. We're going to run a sun and artificial. And what that's going to do is run these little pot lights that we made as well as these placeholder studio lights that we've added in when we were preparing our scene. Or you could just say, you know what? I just want to see the artificial, kind of like a night shot and it will run without any outside light whatsoever. Let's go with sun and artificial. And next you have background light. So you can say, okay, well, the style I want to be sky, no clouds. Typically, if you're inside, do that because it'll speed up your rendering. Okay, well, we're ready to go. Let's press the render button. Now, once I press the render button, depending on your machine, it could take two minutes, could take 10 minutes. At this setting, it's probably not going to take very long, but if you set it up to high and you did an enormous sized print, it could take an hour, it could take two hours or three hours. So those are settings you have to play with in order to get the happy medium. I'm going to click on render and then we're going to see our draft. Now you'll notice here that it starts at zero. The first part of it takes a while and it's going to chug for a little bit. Once it hits 10%, usually it's going to start generating onto the screen and it'll sort of turn black, yeah, and then it'll start showing you all the pieces. The rendering engine that it uses is called Mental Ray, and that's the same rendering engine that you get in 3D Studio Max. So you're getting a very high quality of light and materials. There's our draft, and the actual resolution is horrible, but really we're just looking, is that basically going in the right direction? Now, if you like what you see, you can bump up the quality. And this might be something where I'll zoom in now. I always like to save intermittently as well as I'm rendering because rendering is quite intensive. Let's just hit save. There is a risk that it could crash while rendering if it runs out of memory. Now here we are in the rendering box. Let's change the setting now to medium. That'll give us a little bit higher quality. Our pixel rate's a little higher because we zoomed in. Now this is gonna take a little while longer but it'll be much the same process. It'll go to about 2% and then at about 10%, it'll start generating a view for you to see. So let's click on render. So you can see here, I've paused it just to save us a little bit of time. We don't really wanna just watch a bar go to the right. But you can notice here that the rendering time right now is at 251 and counting. Just so you know, the specs on my machine that I'm running at the time of recording, it's a laptop and it's 32-bit with four gigs of RAM and I have a NVIDIA Quadro graphics card. So it's a decent machine, but on a 64-bit machine, multi-threaded chip, you're going to get quite a fast rendering. So yours may be quite a bit faster than mine. And it's giving you the time right here as to how long it's going to be taking you. Now you can see right away, I mean, the quality on this is much better than the draft. And how can we adjust this? Because the title of this video was Rendering and Adjusting. Let's just go down to Adjust Exposure. And what you can do here, I'm going to click on Reset to Default. So we make sure that that is just the default setting. Now there's little things here that we can tweak just to make it look a little bit more realistic. I'm not going to say realistic, actually, because this is realistic for the time of day and the lights that we've put in. 
it is quite a realistic rendering. Now, what if we maybe just said, well, let's just tweak it a little bit here. We're going to make our highlights a little bit darker. And you see how that's cutting down on some of that glare that we've got right there. Now, I'm not going to go all the way down. I find you have to do small tweaks. That tends to be a little bit better. Now, the shadows, maybe we want those to be a little darker. That will give you a little bit more depth, but it also makes it a little darker in there. Midtones, I find if you make those darker, that can be a good compromise. And like I said, it's very much a tweaking thing. You just have to move it just a little bit and you'll get results. Now the white point, what that means is it's sort of a color issue. Do you want it to be more blue or do you want it to be more yellow? And more yellow tends to give it a warmer feel. So it depends on your opinion. It's a very subjective thing, this art of rendering. Now you also have saturation. If the colors are a little dull, you can punch them up a little bit with your saturation. But you can see very, very small tweaks will do. Once you get the results that you want, you can say OK to that. And then you can save this to the project. So I'm just going to say Save to Project. And it's called Interior 1. That's fine. I'll say OK. Now that gets saved. If we shut down rendering, that gets saved in your project browser under Renderings. Let's just expand that out. So there it is. Now we would be able to export this if we go to the big R, the application menu, and say export image. We could send it out to a JPEG if we want, or a bitmap, or TIFF, or other formats. What's the other thing we can do with this? Well, we can drop this onto a sheet. So it's just a matter of going to your sheet view, so A101 interior rendering. That's a sheet we've set up. Now just drag and drop that onto your sheet. Now if it's too big for the sheet like mine is, just click on Activate View, click on the image, and then just change the size. Let's take it down about that big. And then I'm going to just right click and deactivate the view. Now we can click on our view and just move that up. And there we go, we have a rendering there. Let's take off this title. We have a viewport style that does not have a title. Let's go to that. So let's just drop down viewport and let's go to viewport 2. And now viewport 2, that style does not have a title. That's something we did earlier on in a previous video. And if we just go into the style, you can see here where you can just say show title no. And that's how we don't have a title. So that's a little bit about rendering and a little bit about putting it onto a sheet. Let's continue on with presenting our model.